first of all, when I um, when I see the kids out there, uh, they're seven, eight, nine year olds, uh, even the teenagers. I I see so much of myself in them because uh, I know what they're going through. Uh, I've come from the same background, come from a very humble background. Uh, my parents were migrant farm workers. We used to travel up and down California and then uh, go home to Michoacan in Mexico for about three months out of the year. And so I know what these kids are going through and I know sometimes how they feel that, hey, because we don't have the resources, perhaps it's not possible for us to dream and uh, for a better life in terms of uh, dreaming to become an engineer, a scientist. And so that's why I think it's important for me to come down here and, uh, and be able to show myself in person and then be able to talk about my life because I think uh, if they once they understand that they said hey this individual he's just like us he came from the same humble beginnings and he can do it then if he can do it porque yo no why can't I do it and that's why I'm here just to tell him que si se puede it's just a matter of putting a good recipe together for success and that's a good education uh, having a good work ethic and having a strong family support structure from both parents and then, uh, and then applying yourself and setting some goals for yourself and going forward with those goals and uh, you can succeed in life. And that's what, what I'm here to tell them. I'm living proof that, you know, we live in a great country where the American dream can be realized, but you have to be willing to work and you have to be willing to get yourself in a, a good education. The answer is yes, because the nice part about it is that my parents, you know, in spite of them having a third grade elementary school education, they never quashed my dream of becoming an astronaut. Uh, you know, they allowed me to dream, and I was naive enough to believe that I can reach that dream. So they empowered me to do it, and that's what I'm here to tell the parents here is that, you know, let your kids dream, dream the impossible, because in my particular case, you know, it was impossible, but yet, because I was, I persevered and studied hard and had the support of many people uh, to, to, for me to succeed, I was able to, uh, to achieve my dream. And they can too. Unfortunately, I'm old enough to remember the, uh, the Apollo era. And I was seven years old when I was seeing the uh, astronauts land on the moon and walk on the moon. And so that was the time that, uh, that, that the dream was born, that I wanted, you know, we had this big black and white console TV with rabbit ear antennas and grainy, grainy uh, picture. And of course, I was the youngest one and I always adjusted the rabbit ears. Of course, once you touch the antenna, picture gets good. And there I was stuck at the antenna looking at the, uh, at the, at the images of the uh, of folks, of the astronauts walking on the moon. But I think when my dream got solidified, and this is why I feel it's so important to have role models, is when my dream got solidified, I was a senior in high school, and I heard that NASA had selected the first Latino astronaut, and this was Dr. Franklin Chang Diaz uh, from Costa Rica. I quickly read his background, and his background was so similar to mine in terms of coming from humble beginnings that that's when I sort of challenged myself as a senior in high school. I said, hey, if he could do it, why can't I do it? And that's why I come down here to the valley. That's why I go to California, to Southern California, the Barrios in California, to tell the kids, you know, I did it. So can you. So, you know, don't be afraid to dream. Just back it up with good work ethic and a good education. It was the greatest experience uh, that, that anyone can have. I mean, the culmination of uh, so many years of a dream coming true, uh, the emotions one feels when you're blasting off into space, you know, the engines start up, everything starts shaking, and for eight and a half minutes, you know, the most dynamic part of flight is getting into space. It just takes eight and a half minutes. Eight and a half minutes later, you're traveling at 17,500 miles an hour around the Earth. That means you go around the earth and every 90 minutes you're going around around the world and uh, it, it's just the greatest feeling once you're up there you're free floating all the time and of course you're trained for a job there those 14 days are so precious because they're so expensive that we immediately start working on on our on 
the duties that we have in our mission, and we basically start uh, start working as fast as we can. Furious, it's it's a very fast pace, but at the same time, in our downtime, it's very nice to look down, look at the windows, and look at the earth as one. And you know, I've had time to reflect on that, and I always look at that, and you know, I. I think the biggest impact on me is looking at the earth as one. You know, as kids, we, we, we're usually uh, used to looking at maps of the globe with political boundaries. And there you're seeing it all in its glory, beauty as one. And what I've said, I said, you know, what would be a good idea is if you would get all the political leaders from the world to take a trip like the way I took and they can see our world from our perspective. I guarantee you when they got back to their respective countries, we would have less conflict and less wars in this world. And better yet, we would take better care of our environment. I was mission specialist number two. I was the flight engineer, which meant I'm, I'm sitting right behind the pilot and the commander. Uh, and basically the best seat in the house because I'm looking uh, in the flight deck out the window. Uh, the pilot sees on his right hand side and the commander sees the left hand side where well, I get to see both sides. I get a, a grand view. And what the flight engineer's role is, is if something does go wrong in any one of the systems, I have all the resources, the flight data files to then uh, pull out and start directing or giving instructions to the commander or the pilot as to how to rectify the situation depending on what system breaks. It could either be the pilot or the commander working on, 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 on making it, on fixing the system based on what instructions I give them. So it's a pretty important role as a flight engineer. Once I was up there, I was one of the robotic uh, experts, so I operated the robotic arm. Uh, we have two robotic arms. Uh, one on the shuttle and one on the International Space Station and uh, and also I operated that throughout the whole mission and then I suited up all the all our astronauts that three astronauts that went on spacewalks I put on the uh, uh, helped them put on the spacesuits and then help them uh, go out out the door to uh, in, to do their spacewalks I'm back at NASA working as, a, as an astronaut. I'll have a, a ground job and uh, keep training, and then hopefully I'll have another uh, flight assignment and go up in space again. Of course, from, from now we're going to retire our shuttle fleet at the end of 2010, so the only flights that are going to be available are going to be going up on the Soyuz rocket with the Russians and, and signing up for a long duration mission, which would be a, a six month mission as opposed to 14 days. So I've, I'm going to have to convince my wife that, uh, that, I, that hopefully I'll be able to do that uh, so I can uh, take a mission and, uh, and go up for a long duration since that's the only flights that will be available in the near future. I think it's great that the, uh, that the uh, university uh, takes the uh, initiative to uh, reach out to the community and, uh, and encourage our kids uh, to take a look at uh, engineering and science and technology as viable uh, careers. Because as you guys know, Hispanics are going to be the largest minority population uh, in, in a few years. And uh, the only way we're going to keep, keep the U.S. at the forefront in terms of economic competitiveness is that we keep our technology advantage, uh, we keep furthering it so that we have this technology advantage. And the only way we're gonna be able to do that is we've gotta engage all segments of population to be in science and technology. And so I think uh, HESTEC does a wonderful job at, 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 at being able to accomplish this. This is a great step forward in, uh, in accomplishing this and I'm just happy to be invited and be part of it. Thank you.